Hello everyone, finally we got our hands on the third phone that is using the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset. So I'll just show you the specs of the new Xiaomi 14 that we have. Yes, this is the small one. So the specs are pretty simple, I would say. So SOC, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the screen is using 2670 by 1200 pixels, so slightly higher than 1080p. And uh, the overall specs of the RAM and whatnot, they're not important. If you want to know why, then check it out at the top right corner there. What's important here is the speed of the RAM. So LPDDR5X, it's fast enough. It's actually the fastest that we have right now. And we have 12 gigs in total. It's more than enough actually. So before we proceed with any test, we have to do some setup. So Xiaomi phones, uh, the setup is a bit more complicated and the tools are not really that complete I would say so hit into developer options I presume you already know how to enable developer options so scroll near the bottom here you will have something called uh, this one power consumption then start this thing the frame monitor tools and this thing will appear so we hit back into the home screen now I know some of you have commented that Xiaomi phones can also change the render resolution but uh, yeah, Xiaomi phones, they don't actually work that way. Let's just change to Genshin Impact for example. So when you hit in this custom button here, you can see we can actually change the resolution to 720p or default. However, it doesn't actually change the game's resolution. Uh, I tried it and uh, it just doesn't do anything to the game at all. So I just leave it in default because that's the quote unquote highest render resolution that we can go with. And I will also show you a comparison screenshot at 720p and at the default render resolution for Genshin Impact in particular. And to my eyes, I think they just look identical. So I don't think this option is doing anything. And this optimized graphics is actually to boost the GPU performance and save power. This is actually, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the, the description is very vague. I'm not sure what they're doing. How can you optimize it? Because you don't have access to the game engine. I don't know. We'll leave that for next time perhaps. So the GPU setting, you can just set it to high quality. It will do whatever it wants to do. And uh, I just use it in custom because this is the settings that I have already set just now. The frame rate also doesn't matter because the game is only at 60 FPS for Genshin Impact in particular. Maybe for some other games like uh, COD Mobile or PUBG Mobile, we can enable higher frame rates if we enable uh, either 90 or 120 FPS. And uh, additional settings, this one is to just change the sampling rate of the touchscreen and all of those stuff. So we can change it to Pro or customize to however we want. And uh, I just leave it in Pro mode because that's the one that I find it to be the best. And then we just start testing with Genshin Impact. Not bad for a support character, I think. Triple percent, not bad. 
and now I need to farm some of these uh, unicorn balls to get the literally get the horn for the uh, this, this gun lady so this should be quick especially since I'm using the hyper bloom team that's a frame skip I'm getting weird frame skips here and here, here and there. Ah, this boss is such a waste of time. Can you just don't jump around? And I get some rubbish artifacts as usual. Okay. So while waiting for the unicorn boss to respawn, let's just walk around Chenyu Vale, uh, do some treasure hunting because uh, free gems anyway and this place is demanding enough that I am confident that it can take advantage of the snaring and agent tree and also cause some frame drops. As we can see there, we are hovering somewhere around 56, 60, somewhere around there. The polling rate of this tool is not the best, so that's why you can see the refresh of the frame rate is actually very very slow and um, I will also enable this as well so boost performance this I don't know what it actually does it says that we're getting 70 something FPS right now but this is not gonna be accurate because again this game can only run at 60 FPS maximum as we can see here we are running it at the highest possible graphical settings 60 FPS so where does the 70 something FPS come from? I have no idea. This is actually the more correct FPS number, but again, the polling rate isn't that good. So actually, this is the best we have. I'll use this team because I do need to farm some of those uh, friendship levels. So yeah, this, this Yilan can handle everything. So. She, she's a very powerful character. Yeah, I hate their shield so much. Why are the enemies spawning higher and higher? What what happened to the audio just now? That audio glitch is weird. I have never experienced it in any modern devices before. Treasure. One way to treasure. 
you want your target out of hiding. Bro, I just want my blue thing. Where are you taking me? The frame rate isn't exactly consistent, I would say. We're jumping somewhere 50 something, 60. I would say it is pretty much above 50 FPS at all times. So that's good as of now. I'm not sure if it will thermal throttle yet. Probably it will, but we'll have to play a little bit longer just to see how things go. You know, it'd be interesting if this gaming character actually speaks Cantonese because he is supposed to be speaking Cantonese, but he just doesn't. I speak Cantonese, maybe I can voice act for this character, right? That would be... that would be awkward. <laughs> I think we've been in Genshin Impact for about half an hour and as far as I can see here, the frame rate is never going to be at 60 FPS. It jumps around quite a lot, uh, mo mostly around 50 FPS. So I think it is still quite commendable. It's actually quite similar performance wise with the Galaxy S24 with the Exynos 2400, which is surprising to see that the small Exynos 2400 phone gonna perform more or less the same as this phone when we're playing Genshin Impact at the highest possible graphical settings. So, oh shit, I haven't done the daily commissions yet. Shh. Oh, I don't think I need to, right? Because I have the, the point system. Oh, yes, thank you, I don't have to do those stupid commissions. So, yeah, I think we're done with the game right now. Uh, let me just take the temperature real quick. So temperature at the lower part of the phone here, we're getting around 42 degrees Celsius on the skin, which is okay, quite high actually. Around the hottest spot here is around where the camera is supposed to be, the, the rear facing camera just right beside that. And we can see it is nearly 45 degrees Celsius. No wonder my finger starts to feel a little bit toasty. and. Uh, yeah, that it seems to be the hottest spot for this phone at the front. Actually, 45 degrees Celsius on the surface means that it's going to be around 47, 48 degrees Celsius inside. So it's still within the safety limit. It's just not comfortable to hold, uh, especially if you're going to touch around the, that area of the screen. And then for the rear side of the phone here, this camera bump is going to be a giant insulator, so it is no surprise that the chip that is located somewhere around here is going to be toasty because this thing is going to prevent any sort of thermal conduction to occur from the chip to the phone's rear glass here and then to the environment, as in to dissipate the heat up. So if we're gonna look at some other areas then it's gonna be as expected so we're getting 39 degrees celsius around the bottom side around the middle is around 42 degrees celsius it's just this giant insulator here we can see the temperature is only at 40 40.9 41 degrees celsius somewhere around there so yeah it's gonna be warm if you're gonna play Genshin Impact oh yeah the frame rate isn't even consistent 
like what we mentioned earlier, it's never gonna reach 60 FPS, so mostly around 50 FPS. Once again, it's pretty close in terms of performance with the Galaxy S24 with the Exynos 2400. So if you wanna watch that gaming test video, link at the top right corner there. So now let's go to the next game. So for the next game, it's gonna be PUBG Mobile. Uh, I'm gonna just max everything out here just to see if we can actually get 90 FPS option. So for PUBG Mobile, we're gonna have 90 FPS, anything higher? I don't think so. Oh, this is disappointing. So we can only get smooth 90 FPS. That's about it. Uh, yeah, these are all of the options that I'm gonna use. So let's just jump into a game. Again, not gonna be an issue for this phone to run at 90 FPS. So let's just hop into a map. I like a smaller map, so Sandhawk, I guess. I'm gonna land as fast as possible. The speaker, I think I'm definitely gonna cover it quite a lot. It's located around here, so if you hear any weird audio, that's because my finger is covering. Uh, Genshin Impact's weird audio glitch is definitely not caused by my finger covering it, so I don't know what happened there. Oh, uh, there are two numbers on this FPS tool here. The, the bottom number is the correct one. So just ignore the one at the top. Yeah, PUBG Mobile, 90 FPS, no issues at all. I really, really hope the developers will give us more options. Like, for example, HDR 90 FPS is not going to be an issue for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Just, just give us the option to enable it. If it lags, it's my problem, not the game developer's fault. So just, just let us play with all of those options. So I think we're done here. Let's just move on to the next game. So for the next game, this one is PUBG New State. I am gonna enable everything as well. And then let's just jump into a game. The interface of this thing is actually quite bad. So I don't know why it's so flashy. I cannot drag it down here. I have to press this part. Press, not drag. I have to press this thing to hide the entire thing. It's just weird Xiaomi UI things, I guess. This is running on HyperOS, by the way. Okay, so for PUBG New State, we can go Yo 90 FPS, everything at the highest 
uh, we don't have extreme graphic quality that's okay um, yeah everything is like this we are using at Vulkan API so okay so for this game in particular there are two numbers look at the one at the top that's the correct one I don't know why this tool keeps on giving us double numbers but we just have to know which number to look for So yeah, PUBG New State, whatever graphical settings that we're using, 90fps not going to be an issue at all. It does dip below 90 sometimes, like what you saw just now, 87. I would still consider that to be within the margin of error, so I would still consider it to be 90fps consistent. Quite consistent at least, so yeah. There's someone shooting. Bro, you're gonna die out there. Seriously? Yeah, I think we can move on to the next game. PUBG New State? Not an issue at all. I mean, do you guys actually play PUBG New State or should I just skip this game for the next time? Let me know down in the comment section below. I, I really like to hear what you guys think. Now for the next game is going to be COD Mobile. So this game is interesting. Uh, as you can see, I can enable everything maximum here. It's not going to matter that much. I don't think it's going to affect the game at all. So let's just jump into it and then we'll take a look at the graphical settings because COD Mobile has an option called Super Resolution and that makes the game run at the native resolution of your screen. At least that's what I can see on Samsung phones because they can see the render resolution. So I'm not sure if that's the case for this phone. So for COD Mobile, we can only go max graphical quality at max frame rate or ultra frame rate at medium graphical quality. I think I've settled for this because we can get 120 FPS in multiplayer and we'll proceed with multiplayer as well. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I play the multiplayer and not battle royale because of this higher frame rate. That, that's pretty much all I care about. Then at the bottom here, we can see super resolution is turned on. Uh, variable rate shading, I turn it off. I don't know why I cannot turn on SSAO, which is weird. The question mark button isn't even working. Then optical performance of scope, I just turn it on. So, now let's hop into a game. I don't think we're gonna go below 120 FPS, but we'll see. I mean, there's gonna be some tiny fluctuation like 119, 118, but we're not gonna get like 110 or 100 FPS. So, yeah. 8 Gen 3 is actually very powerful and this game isn't exactly that demanding even though we can play it at 120 FPS. Bro, snob stiff. <laughs> Alright, 
The wind's coming. Friendly shock RC is ready. Friendly shock RC is coming. Contact the enemy. Tango down. The enemy is shot. Sentry gun ready to deploy. Target in sight. How do I get there? Hard point contested. Hostiles have captured the hard point. Oh god. Oh! Where's the objective, sir? What the heck is this map? Okay, never mind, you still win. So, yeah, the frame rate never dropped, which is surprising. Actually, not surprising at all. Uh, the gameplay was smooth all the way through, and uh, too bad I died. If not, I think I would have gotten the nuclear, nuclear warhead thing. Yeah. Anyway, good experience. No problems at all. Now, let's go for Mobile Legends then. Uh, Mobile Legends, again, I'm just going to max out everything. I don't think these settings are ever gonna affect the game at all so I don't really know why I'm doing that in the first place uh, yeah we, we don't have any way to verify that those settings actually work so the highest graphical settings that we can go is super frame rate at ultra graphical settings uh, absolutely no idea what those things mean because I really don't know if super is 90 or 120 FPS so let's just hop into a game the 
Yeah, 90 FPS. Not gonna be an issue for Mobile Legends as well. Again, this game isn't particularly demanding. And once more, I think we can go 120 FPS. Not gonna be an issue as well. So, yeah, I'm just gonna stay in Mobile Legends for a while longer because I don't want to be labeled as a lever. Even though I will leave, just not so early. What the heck is that? Untargetable. But yeah, this, this game, 90 FPS on the Xiaomi 14, not gonna be an issue at all. So you know what, let's skip to the next game then. And it is gonna be War Thunder. Again, I'm enabling all of those options for god knows what reason. Uh, yeah, this game is gonna be the most taxing out of all the games that we've tried today because it is having ray tracing and as we know ray tracing once it's enabled even on the s24 ultra or the rg phone 8 it will tank all the way down to around 60 fps so let's try and see how this game performs on the xiaomi 14. option graphics we can see maximum maximum everything at the highest so we just head into a game of tanks and see how things go yeah, so the FPS meter doesn't work. We have to look at this FPS meter instead. Uh, yeah, it, it says 120, it's impossible. But here it says 88. That's more like it, but even 88, I would say it's a bit too high. Maybe they did lower the render resolution because the RG Phone 8 cannot even keep up at 80 FPS for this game. Oh my god. This is a pay to win game by the way, so if you got money, just, just buy the best tank that you have, then you instantly win the game. So there's that. And yeah, the frame rate now is a lot more realistic compared to the RG Phone 8 and the S24 Ultra. 59 FPS. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's actually what we get on those other phones that are running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 as well. And so far, only the Exynos is able to keep up with this game at around 100 something FPS because of ray tracing. I hate the tank controls by the way, it's, it's too realistic to the point that it's not fun. Yeah. Imagine you have to manage everything whereby a real tank will have a few people in the tank itself to control multiple different places, areas of the tank. One shot and I'm dead. I shot that tank twice. If you tell me this game isn't pay to win, I don't know what is. So yeah, this phone couldn't keep up at 120 FPS at all. So at most we're getting is around 60, 59, 58, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's it. So you know what? We'll jump to the next game. We're not done yet. And uh, the next game that we're gonna do is COD Warzone. I know a lot of people are asking for this game. So for this game, we just go into the graphics quality, everything at the high, high, high. That's all of the options available for this phone, which is pretty disappointing, honestly speaking. Now let's just hop into a game. Uh, it's still finalizing install. I can't play. I don't know why. Oh, 
Oh, what? Oh, surprisingly, 60 FPS is all we get. Bro, shoot! God damn! This game seems to have improved in terms of visual quality compared to when it was first released like about 3 weeks, a month ago. Uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, that's the problem. I can't slide down and then I got shot. Good stuff. Oh, we do get the Gulag here as well. It's the same as the PC version. What the heck is that? Okay. So for the absolute last game that we're going to try is Karak Street. I know a lot of people have been asking me about this game in particular. Okay, so for Car X Street, the graphic quality, I'm just gonna max everything. And then motion blur, I'm gonna turn it off, it's horrible. FPS, no limits, so we'll see how much we can get out of this game. So I think this game does have a 60 FPS limit but it doesn't feel like it's 60 FPS, it feels a lot higher than 60. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a FPS meter in the game. Honestly I don't rely on this thing much because uh, as we already know in this test alone, this video alone, there are quite a lot of errors from this tool here. Yeah, this game's no limit is actually 60 FPS. There's a frame drop just now and I think that's due to loading. And now, let's enter a race and see how things go. What the heck is up with the lights? Hmm, we're getting 40 something FPS. Interesting. And now we are back to around 60. That's definitely thermal throttling. And now we're back to 40 something, 50 something again. Uh, I'm not sure if the FPS fluctuation is due to thermal throttling or what. If it's thermal throttling then it should last a lot longer. 
maybe it is loading all of the textures and stuff and it's not fast enough that that's a very harsh fps dip we're getting like 20 something fps right now um okay and now we're back to 50 something fps so it's either number one thermal throttling which i don't think so because it doesn't thermal throttling usually lasts a lot longer in terms of fps dipping it seems more like it's trying to load all of the textures and stuff and then it kind of have to slow down to load all of those stuff and that seems like the more likely answer to this conundrum here um either way if it does load all of the textures and whatnot then you can get 60 fps quite consistently i mean it does dip to around 40 something i'm not sure what happened there and it doesn't actually last long It does seem like this phone is having a much shorter time window for thermal throttling as well. I mean, if it is thermal throttling, then you can reach 60 FPS for a split second, then it gets too hot, it drops all the way down to around 30 something FPS or even 20 FPS like what we experienced just now. And then once it drops like one or two degrees, then it will instantly boost back up the clock speed to get 60 FPS once more. I don't know if that's the problem. Okay. I don't know if that's what this phone is doing, maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe it's due to the loading speed as well. Um, inconclusive is the answer that I would give you because uh, even at Genshin Impact, when we play for so long, it doesn't actually thermal throttle. So, hmm, this is weird. So yeah, that's the gaming test of the new Xiaomi 14. Now, this Xiaomi 14 is going to compete directly with the Galaxy S24 and for many regions around the world, I think except for North America and China, US and China more like, uh, we're getting the Exynos 2400. And I know a lot of people do not like Exynos, just the name alone is enough to sway people away from this phone and a lot of people will consider buying only if there's Snapdragon. And for a small phone, I would have to say this is a good choice as well because as you can see here, the sizes are pretty similar but the Xiaomi 14 is definitely a lot taller. It's slightly bigger and it's also a lot thicker as well because when we look at it sideways like this, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it like, ah yeah, this seems good. Uh, the camera bump on the Xiaomi 14 is actually thicker. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up but yeah you can see the camera module on the Xiaomi 14 is definitely thicker and I think we should start measuring the thickness of a phone with the camera pump in included because this is getting ridiculous but either way we'll talk about all of those in our full review of the Xiaomi 14. So far the performance is to be expected from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything to add here. So if you want to know more about this phone, then check out our review at the top right corner there or down in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.